So I go to the Ryza thing, I double click on that, and then I close this up. Now check this out, with Ryza, here's the thing. It's not some guessing game about what you're supposed to do. If you look at this data entry list, it is exactly a step-by-step -step of how you need to use Ryza. This data entry is always a guide. One thing I like to do is go to global first and name what I'm doing here. And this will be one way slab design. Then I want to go to the solutions. Uh, you know, I'm okay with this for now. We're not going to worry about this. The codes. We want to go down to concrete. For the concrete, just make sure it's using the ACI code that you want to use. We're using ACI 318.11, so great. And then you can look at concrete and the shear regions. Uh, right now, the defaults are, are good for us. Look at here, remember, the one thing you might recognize is the rectangular stress block. That's the equivalent stress block that it's using. And then you might even recognize the concrete rebar set, the ASTM standard in which defines the grades of steel that we use. This right here, we'll, you will we'll learn later when we talk about columns, but I think everything is good. Don't worry about seismic and footings right now because this, does this have any lateral loads, our one-way slab? No, it's all gravity loads, so we don't even have to worry about seismic. So click OK. Now look at our layout. We have 60 feet going in that one direction. So we need to modify our grid. So I just go over here to project grid. I could go through all this stuff right here. I'm not too much of a fan of this these increments, so I'm going to say bye-bye to that. And I'm just going to go to this little icon with the yellow pencil. Click on there. This tells you how many squares at what distance. So this says 30 squares at one foot each. This says 30 squares at one foot each in the Y direction. For us, the X, this is the global X right here, global X. For us, we want 60 probably at one foot. If you wanted, you could just do, we could do six at 10 foot if we want to be exact, right? Right here, and then here, even this one, we don't really need any in the, in the Y, but here I'll put two at one, like this, okay? And that will generate for me a grid here. Then I go to the materials. I look at all the materials Ryza is considering for me. And really, I'm not worried about steel because I'm not using steel or hot roll, cold roll, blah, blah, blah. I'm using concrete. And here it lists all the concretes that are already built into Ryza, or Risa. So here you see all the concretes, 3 to 4 KSI, normal weight concrete, all the various properties associated with it. Here, 3 to 4 KSI, lightweight concrete. That's what the LW stands for. We don't need to do anything here. If we wanted to add a material like 6 KSI concrete, you just hit enter. And you could boom, 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 type it in. But we don't need that. I'll delete that line. Delete marked line. Great. Done. Close that up. Section sets. This might be new to you. You may have never used a section set before. But when our building gets really complex, like you have beams, columns, slabs, boom, boom, boom. You want all the columns to be the same. You want all the beams to be the same. So you want to define a specific section set. You might have even edge columns all be the same. Interior columns be another group. Edge beams, interior beams, all being different types or different sizes. But you want them, those groups, to be the same. It's like making clicks, little groups that are similar, right, that get along. For us, in our concrete, we could call it 1A. I'm going to call this my slab, one way. That's going to be the name of my section set. The dimensions here. I'm going to predefine some dimensions. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, very good, very good. So here, I, I cl uh, close this up again. I go, I click on data entry, section sets, and then I go onto the tabs and I click concrete. Sweet, yes. And then I go to the label, just click on the label once and just retype one way. Then I go to the shape. I click on the little red arrow. Bam. And I have, I'm going to choose a rectangular section. What is the width that we need to use for our one-way slab? 12 inches. Depth, you know, that 12 inches is a little big. Let's go with 6 inches for now. We want Risa, hopefully, to do some optimization for us. But right here, we're just establishing a starting point. So now I click OK, and you'll notice here, if I expand this a little bit, it changes concrete rectangular sh section 6 inches by 12 inches. My type is going to be a beam. Great. My design list is rectangular. I don't know what that other one is. Let's see. Let's open it wider. Rectangular MM. Oh, I'm going to have to look that up. 
I don't know. I think that might be millimeters. Maybe. I could be wrong. Who knows? Maybe if I post this on YouTube, someone from Rise Up will come and correct me. <laughs> Who knows, right? So the material I'm going to use, right here, when I click here, the entire material list will come up that I have. Even any materials I created. So I'm going to use normal weight concrete 4KSI. So make sure it's normal weight concrete 4KSI. Design rules, you know, we don't have any other choices. And that's it. That's all you need. Any questions about this part, the section set? All right, very good, okay. Okay, so we have defined the section sets. Let's click on member design rules. This is new to you. So member design rules. This says, here's my typical design rule. You can create all the design rules that you want. In terms of the depth of my one-way slab, maybe I don't want to go beyond 10 inches. That's, so that's the max depth. The minimum depth, like let's think about cover, interior cover, and the bar. So let's say four inches. The max width, that's a fixed value for us. And same with the min width, it's a fixed value for us. Now this max bending check and max shear check, this is what it is. Remember our basic design relationship, phi mn greater than or equal to mu. Instead of doing this, what they do is divide both sides by the design moment strength and have a one here. If, it's less than, if this group is less than one, it's good, okay? Same thing with shear. We rearrange this to be VU over phi VN. This is really another way to look at the basic design relationship. Now you go to the rebar selection. What's the smallest rebar that you want in this typical design rule? Okay, so let's go with number three. What about the largest? Let's go with six. Let's give it some choices, but yeah, you could go with number 10. It's up to you. Based on your experience with the one-way slab, you know that the rebar is typically smaller. The shear and, you know, right now what's going to happen, the shear is going to get designed for us, but really we're in a one-way slab design, so this is of no consequence really. Now here's the cover definitions. These are our cover rules. If you wanted more cover, you would make these numbers larger. If you were doing an exterior structure exposed to earth, you might want to change these to three inches. Good. So close that up. Done. We're not making a wall, so we can, we can skip that. Although, you know, I bet if you looked into it more, you could design your one-way slab like a wall if you did a larger struct, like a 3D model. A seismic design rules, we're not worried about that. We don't have gravity loads. Connection rules, we're not even going to mess around with that. We're just starting out. And same with footing definitions and all that. The joint coordinates tells us we need to define, define the nodes and the members. Okay, so now we're finally going to draw the model. So right here, it's really joint conditions, boundary conditions, and members. We're going to use the, the graphic user interface tools or the GUI tools right here. I, I go over here. I look at the stick on the far left, click on it, bam, okay, I got this choices that come up. On this choice here, I say, all right, well, the material for this is going to be concrete. Very good. I could choose, I can make everything individual, but I want this to be part of a group, right? So I'm going to assign it a section set. So I go click on the section set. I might have multiple choices in a more complex design, but here we're just starting simple. So this is my one-way slab, so I click on that. And now I'm okay. I click on apply and I'm ready to draw each member. Most common mistake that happens is someone takes this right here and then draws one member all the way across and then connects other members or they think they're connecting other members to the middle, but Riza takes that as not connected. Okay? It doesn't automatically merge nodes that intersect. So we're gonna start from here and go 10 foot, 10 foot, 10 foot, 10 foot, 10 foot. Okay? So we're gonna have this really long continuous beam. 10 foot, 10 foot, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Click escape. That'll let you out of that. Click escape one more time. It returns you to the arrow. Very good. Now we want to apply some boundary conditions. And those are our supports at N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, N6, and N7. Mod boundary condition. So I just went to the thing that looks like a pin support. Go to that boundary condition. And I am going to use a pinned. So click on apply for pinned right here. And I'm just going to pin the edges. N1 and N7, I pin it. Click escape. Now I'm going to apply the boundary supports at N3, N4, N5, N6, and N6. And I'm going to apply those as uh, rollers. 
I clicked on roller and I had Y translation. What happens if you don't, because this is rise at 3D and we're making a 2D model, right? So sometimes there's that out of plane issues, that warning that comes up. It's not really that big of a deal, but some people are not comfortable with that. So right here, just go ahead and put fixed in the Z translation and then click on, so you'll have Y translation, re reaction, Z translation fixed, click on apply. And then for all the other joints, N2, N3, N4, N5, and N6, we have the roller supports. So far, so good. We have built the model. Yes. Okay, congratulations.